Today we're going to talk about the basics of photosynthesis, and the goal of this video is to describe the process of photosynthesis and identify some of the structures and plants that are used in this process. So first, what kind of organisms are plants? To figure that out, you need to know that all living things need energy to survive, and there are two ways of getting energy. Autotrophs are organisms that make their own food, their producers, and heterotrophs are organisms that eat other organisms for food. These are consumers. So what kind of organisms are plants? Are they autotrophs or heterotrophs? Plants are autotrophs. They make their own food, and that food is their source of energy that they need to survive. Now, how do plants make their food? They do this through the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process in which plants use energy from the sun to convert water and carbon dioxide into glucose and oxygen. The glucose is the plant's food source. Glucose is a sugar. Now, here's the chemical equation for photosynthesis. On the left side of the arrow, you have the reactants, and on the right side of the arrow, you have the products. So the plant takes in carbon dioxide, which is a gas that's in the air, and water, which is absorbed from the ground, and that water is a liquid. And they also absorb sunlight. So those are the things that go in to the plant, carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. And what comes out or what's produced by the plant is the sugar glucose and oxygen, which is also a gas that gets released into the atmosphere. And that oxygen is what humans and other organisms breathe. So this is the chemical equation for photosynthesis. Now, I mentioned that gases go in and out. Carbon dioxide goes in and oxygen goes out. So how do they get in and out of the plant? Well, there's a part of the plant called a stoma, and it's a small opening on a plant's leaf that allows carbon dioxide to come in and oxygen to go out. And I've shown you a, a picture of a stoma that's been magnified using a microscope. If you're talking about more than one opening, we call it a stomata, but just a single opening is a stoma. Now, where does photosynthesis occur in plants. So it's going to occur in each plant cell, and there's a specific organelle or part of a cell where it happens, and this part is called the chloroplast. Each square in this picture represents a single plant cell, and each green circle you see within that cell is a chloroplast. Now within a chloroplast, there are some other structures that play an important part in photosynthesis. So there's a thylakoid. A thylakoid is shaped like a flat disc. So you see these disc-shaped things in the picture. Each one of those is a thylakoid. A granum is a stack of thylakoids. And then the stroma is the fluid within the chloroplast. So it's kind of like that space between the granum uh, and another granum, one stack and another stack, that space there is filled with fluid, and that fluid is the stroma. Now, why is the thylakoid so important? Well, the thylakoid, uh, specifically the membrane of the thylakoid, that kind of outer layer of the thylakoid, is composed of pigments, and these pigments capture the sunlight that plants need in order to do photosynthesis. One of the pigments is called chlorophyll, and it absorbs many colors, but it reflects green light. So I've shown an image here of white light coming in, and um, all the colors that you see there are actually contained within white light. All the colors that you see are actually contained within white light. So when the sunlight, which is white light, hits these plants, 
the plants absorb many of the colors but reflect green. At least that's what chlorophyll does. Chlorophyll absorbs many colors but reflects green. Another pigment within plants is called uh, carotenoid. Think of the word carrot. So you can probably predict what color this one's going to reflect. Carotenoid, the carotenoid pigment uh, absorbs many colors, but it reflects these warmer colors like yellows and reds and uh, orange. So pigments are very important for photosynthesis to happen. They, they're needed in order to absorb sunlight. 